Hey, this is Wes McDermott, and in this 3D World Magazine video, we're going to uh, go ahead and explore a little bit further the question that uh, you've probably already read in the magazine. And we're going to take a look at, you know, what's the best way to start a sculpt? You know, do you use DynaMesh? Do you use Z-Spheres, uh, Base Mesh from a 3D app? And so in this video, what I want to do is just kind of talk about, you know, m you know, my workflow. I happen to use um, a real kind of a hybrid approach where I'm, I'm using not just ZBrush, but I'm also using like a 3D app as well, uh, back and forth. I'm just kind of trying to use the strengths of both applications. I like the free form of ZBrush, uh, but also kind of like the, um, the accuracy I get from like a 3D app, you know, being able to select edges and, and you know, do bevels and things like that a, a lot faster. So what we'll do is um, we're going to take a look at just like a little example. Um, so let's just say that we had like an arm here. So we'll, we'll start like, you know, here's like the forearm. We got a little elbow here, wrist, and we'll have like this hand, and here's some fingers and stuff. And so uh, what I was thinking I would do is just show like maybe something I would, I would typically do. So um, let's just say that this is either like maybe a robot arm or maybe it's like uh, some mech armor or something like that. But what we're going to look at doing is just kind of like working in on this little forearm piece. So um, let's say this forearm piece would look something like this maybe. So it was a piece that would kind of come along, come down this bottom, and maybe come up like this, and then, you know, come out like this. So we might get this kind of stylized piece. Something, you know, maybe something like this here. And then we might have some, like, you know, some cool little pieces coming up the top, you know, some... You know, it's just little sci-fi looking type things, maybe something on the bottom. So, you know, just something that's, you know, like I said, it's robotic or mech armor or something like that. So, you know, here's what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at, you know, going about building this piece. And so, you know, typically what I might do is um, I might start in ZBrush uh, using DynaMesh again so I can just kind of free form, work the, um, you know, work the silhouette, work the form, stuff like that. Just kind of quickly just, you know, get a nice shape. Um, and then what we're going to do is bring that back into a 3D program. And I'll just kind of show you the workflow of it. And, you know, this is a really simplistic example, but um, I think it'll serve the point. So let's go ahead and just jump over to ZBrush. And what I have here is just like the default project Dynasphere. I think it's like at 128 resolution. And so uh, what we're going to do now is I've got the move brush going. Um, and I just kind of, you know, this is going to kind of be the start of where I, I, I create like a base mesh. Um, but, you know, I don't really get too accurate with it. Like uh, ZBrush has a lot of tools now where, I mean, where you can make, you know, the, the edge loops and crease edges. And there's a lot of hard surface stuff. You can do extrusions and, and things like that with the, with the transpose tool now. Um, you know, and those are good. Uh, just for me, uh, I'm just better at using a traditional 3D app. So, um you know, that's why I might start with something like this uh, here in ZBrush and then start moving into the actual, you know, just kind of get myself a base shape here and then kind of move into the actual piece. So here we are. I'm just starting out with some, some DynaMesh here and I'm just kind of exploring. And, and that's one of the things I really like about working with DynaMesh is that I can just explore these shapes um, and just take, you know, you don't have to get you know, you don't have to be real accurate with it, um, and you can just ha kind of have fun talking, you know, just working yourself through these shapes here, um, just concepting, really. Uh, so we'll get something like this, maybe. Um, let's see. We'll then maybe grab hold of our, we got our clip curve here. Let's see. Whoops. Let's take this around the, uh, let's go this way, and I'm just going to just slice into that, just make a quick hard edge with that, and slice this way here. And, um, Again, I'm just kind of thinking like here's maybe the area where the wrist will be, so I'll just kind of mask this out. I'm just going to do a control click there to uh, invert that, um, and then you know we'll do the move tool. And you can see like you know if you know when you're really you know people who are like really good with working with ZBrush, you know they can do all this modeling stuff right in here. But just me, it's you know I'm not I'm not too great with it when it comes to this kind of stuff. So um, I tend to just kind of you know, use it to get some of a base shape, just, just some forms down, and then I'll take this into the 3D program. We'll work with it some more. Um, so here we go. We'll just, maybe this is part of our opening here. So now I'm just going to control click to invert that. Uh, again, get our transpose going. Let's just make sure that we're in a nice transpose line here. And yeah, all I'm doing is just kind of pushing that in like this. And we'll drop that out. Maybe just quick dime mesh that and just kind of smooth that out. So, you know, now let's just go back into our, um, just our move brush, pull this guy up. And then here's where we might 
you know, start to think about stylizing this piece. So like, so here's the end. Maybe this is where our elbow is going to be. So I might try to pull this piece up like this. Kind of size this guy up. Kind of bring that in. Maybe this comes this front part here. And we'll just kind of get a nice round shape with that. So that's looking okay. And here we'll come around to the front. And maybe it kind of bulges more on the bottom. Like this here. It kind of tapers a little bit more on the top into our top view here and the whole idea of this is you know I'm just I really like that you know you could do I mean this is a really like I said a real simple example you could easily whip this up in your 3d program to a shape like this but I don't know I really like that within ZBrush I can just you know use, using brush based tools I'm just kind of you know working a silhouette of this object here and it's really organic and it's actually kind of fun so here we'll just go with this so let's just say like okay this is like my my piece here so like I said this is either like the forearm to this like robot character or it's part of a, a mech suit or something like that so now that we got this in place um, what we'll do is we'll come over and we'll just kind of go Z this guy right over into Maya so I've got this base shape here let's press go Z and that's going to send this guy over to Maya for us. So uh, now that we're here in Maya, let's just go into our perspective view. And we'll hit F on the keyboard to kind of frame this guy up. And uh, what we're going to do now is uh, work with this guy. So what I'm actually going to do is uh, just use this as a base shape and just kind of draw some, some topology over top of it. Now, I'm not... Um, really interested in saying okay this is going to be like a, a total uh, you know resurface job here but you know I just kind of got this nice little shape here it was a quick way for me to get it and so I just kind of want to, to uh, work with it again uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to utilize Nex uh, this is a modeling plugin that I use often in Maya and uh, I really dig it so uh, we're going to use Nex so uh, first off let's go ahead and just grab this guy I'm going to just throw him into his own layer here and um, go back to our next and we're going to select with him selected I'm just going to come down and make sure that on my transform constraints I'm just going to make sure that that object I think it got cut off there in the screen gap but you can just excuse me the screen capture but you can see that it starts off with this wax dyna mesh 129 this is just the mesh that um, ZBrush sent over to us and uh, so now that we've got this guy selected at the very top here I'm going to go up to next I'm going to tear this menu option so you can see that we'll bring this into view and I'm going to go to my object display and I'm going to run this uh, see-through toggle mode here so it's going to let me do this see-through toggle mode and uh, now we'll go ahead and turn this off or we'll, here we'll just pull that out of the way and we'll turn our grid off and so now I've got this object and what I'm going to do now is just work with um, the quad draw tool inside of next and so what I've done here with this transform constraint um, this is like in a sense in a sense making the object live so now I can just snap vertices and any topology or anything I do is going to just draw right on top of this guy so again it's just kind of like a little resurface thing and quad draw let, lets me quickly uh, just draw out well quads so um, what we'll do is now that I'm in quad draw mode I'm just gonna go ahead and just start uh, just putting down some points across here um, like this and uh, you know just making some quads here that I can work with you can see I'm starting to put these points across and uh, these guys are all sticking to the surface. Now what I can do is hold down shift and just drag. And then there we go. I've got some topology to work with here. And so I can then continue to start, you know, work with this guy um, as I bring him over. Uh, so you can grab this little guy here, put him here like this. And we'll just put another polygon in here. And uh, let's do the same thing right here. Grab this, put a polygon in there. Uh, so now what we'll do is we'll go into edge mode. Whoops. Actually, that's why I put that guy on another layer. Let's go over to my channel box here. And for this guy, I'm going to go ahead and just put him down as, um, I'm going to lock him like this so that um, he's basically a reference. So we don't have to um, worry about selecting him when we go into edge mode. So I'm going to drop the quad draw tool. Uh, I'm in edge mode here. So uh, now what we'll do is we'll just do a uh, loop selection like this. I'll grab the uh, move tool. Um, then next thing I'm going to do is hold down D and with next here I can snap to any of these edges so I'm just going to just left click on this edge and snap to it like this and then you can see that if I hold down the shift key um, and I come over or mouse over the manipulator in the Z um, axis here I can actually just extrude so now what I'm going to do is just start extruding this uh, and it's actually doing a surface slide as it does this uh, go into the um, scale tool just kind of scale this guy up just go into the move tool again I'm just doing a surface slide as I go across here and and what I'm doing is just uh, building out some more um, 
topology here. And uh, as I start to go across, now we can go back into quad draw here. And uh, this is telling me about history. We don't care. We don't want to see that again. Uh, so now what I can do is hold down shift and just uh, kind of put another edge loop in here. So I'll just do a left click snap that edge loop in and that's also uh, gone ahead and snapping itself uh, or constraining itself back down to that surface so uh, again what I'm doing here is I'm just you know using that quick shape that I did inside of ZBrush to kind of uh, create myself just something a little guide that I can work with so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause this real quick and I'll come back in a second when I've kind of got this finished up Okay, so we're back. Uh, I took just a little bit of time to uh, go ahead and just create the rest of the shape. Uh, just same thing you saw this using the next tools. Um, just created the whole shape. Uh, just, you know, didn't worry about so much making it exact perfect or anything like that because that ZBrush mesh uh, was just really just a guide for me. Just kind of let me get that overall shape. So as you can see, I did get the, you know, pretty much the exact shape that I wanted from there, but it's, you know, just falling around. And, um, you know, it was real quick for me to make that shape inside of ZBrush. So uh, now what we'll do is uh, we'll take this guy and we're going to send him back over. So let's just go Z him in. And let's see, here he is right here. Let's just drag him out into the canvas. I'd actually... Okay, here we go. We've got it. And so uh, now we've got this piece. Uh, let's go ahead and just change this real quick to just like the basic material. Um, okay, so... Let's take this back out. All right, so now we've got our piece here, and uh, give us some more real estate. And if we go ahead and start to uh, divide this guy up, whoops. Let's go ahead and make sure. Let's see under my geometry here. Oops, I need to actually bring that down. Let me just delete that hierarchy there, and then we'll start to just divide the sky. Okay, so we'll look at this, and you can see that. Okay, so we've got our shape uh, back in. And uh, the other thing that's pretty, whoops, uh, that I can do with this is start to just kind of use the uh, ZBrush smoothing tool. So, yeah, yeah, we've got like the sculpt geometry brush and things like that inside of Maya, but uh, ZBrush's uh, brush system is uh, 100 times better, so why not just use that? Um, okay, so we've got our shape the way we want it, um, but one of the things that we had talked about was the fact that... Um, you know, we've got this really smooth edge here. So, you know, around this area, this is kind of like more of a mech type piece. So this edge is really, really smooth. Uh, and then here we've got this edge right here, you know, around this outer piece. Uh, it's very smooth. We need some hard edges. Now we could, you know, go in with our with our brush tools and, and start to crease these edges up. Uh, we could actually use ZBrush's uh, crease tool to actually do this. Uh, but again, I don't like all of the control shift, hide, unhide, select, you know, lasso, select, edge, crease, and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, again, I just want to rely on uh, Go Z. So, what I'm going to do is just take the sky back down to its lowest level, and I'm going to delete to higher. So, I've got no subdivisions on the sky. And uh, let's go ahead and just Go Z him back. Um, in our case, we didn't make any changes or anything like that, but we very well could have uh, if we wanted to. So, um, if we wanted to make any minor adjustments to this guy. So, let's just say, for instance, we grab um, our move tool and uh, we just started to kind of just tweak this just a little bit. So say we wanted to, uh, you know, we saw this come back into ZBrush and we actually wanted to kind of, you know, pull this piece up just a little bit more like this here, kind of give this a uh, little bit more flare here at the end like this. So here we got this piece. Uh, we're at a low subdivision level. Let's go ahead and just go Z this guy back. So now he comes back and you can see that that change was made. So if we grab this guy and we hit, you know, three on the keyboard, we're in our subdivision mode. So you can kind of see a little bit of an idea of what we're kind of getting in ZBrush. And again, we got all that smoothing. So uh, what I do is I just use the crease tool. So instead of actually adding in all these extra edge loops, what I like to do is just come in and just make an edge selection. So let's just say that I'm just going to make an edge loop here and here and let's do one in here so um, I'm gonna go ahead and select these guys I'm going to then go down here to the crease tool and just add some edge weighting to that stuff and then we'll go back into object mode and you can see that now I start to get this nice crease um, what we can do is we can grab this guy uh, let's just get a better preview of that so let's go under the shape node here under uh, subdivision levels let's see that's under smooth mesh and uh, let's just increase this one more level and uh, so now you can see that, you know, a little bit more subdivision, you can really see how nice and clean that edge is. And so, you know, when I'm working up, you know, these kind of things, this is so much easier for me to get this kind of, these kind of really nice edges like this, especially when doing hard surface type stuff in conjunction with the two. Um, so you can see that, you know, my idea of, you know, starting with that very rough base mesh, 
uh, or rough shape inside of uh, ZBrush to kind of get me going, bring it into Maya, start to add up the edges, some stuff like that. Uh, again, still working up my base mesh because I haven't done any detail sculpt or anything like that yet. So, uh, you know, just, again, this the purpose of this video is just to really show that workflow of this kind of hybrid workflow of using the two apps together. So let's do the same thing on these guys. Let's do this. This time we'll just hit the G key to repeat that and we'll go ahead and just add in our crease. So now we've got a crease there. So now we've got this little little uh, kind of like mech um, or robot type you know wrist arm casing here that we've got and so now we'll take this stuff and then we'll just kind of go z this back and whoops so that comes in and what i want to show you before we actually do any subdivision is when we go into polyframe and so if we take a look at what's actually happened with that so in when we actually use go z with this you can see that those edge weighting or the creasing that we actually put inside of maya comes back into zbrush is actually just really really tight edge loops and this is the same thing that's going to happen if you're using zbrush's crease tool so it's it's essentially the same thing it's just again it's so much easier at least in my case to do this to you know get get that over to maya make my edge loop selections and then kind of go from there. So now that we've got this guy, let's go ahead and we'll start to divide the geometry up. So here we under our geometry tab, we're going to want to hit divide, divide. And so uh, here we'll do it one more time. So we're at level four. And now you can see that I get this really, really nice, crisp, hard edge for this surface. Um, and so there is a way that I was able to get this piece. So let's just say now this is the base mesh piece that I want to start to work with, um, with this, with this part of this arm. And so uh, by using, first off again, ZBrush, we kind of roughed out the shape with DynaMesh. We then brought that over to Maya, uh, drew some better topology over top of it, a little bit easier to work with. Uh, then we set up some edge creasing uh, inside of Maya, brought that back. So now we get this piece, and now this is basically becomes our base mesh that we can start to work with. And we're um, actually going to... Uh, begin our detail sculpt. So now we can actually come in with all the ZBrush, you know, maybe use some, some different alphas and things like that to actually cut in some some um, actual seams along this or add in some different pieces like that. So again, um, hope you found this useful. Uh, this is just happens to be my way of working. ZBrush is really powerful. I really like its sculpting brush system. I do have kind of a rough time working around some of the, um, you know, transpose extrusions and all the some of the workflows with um, creasing edges and things like that. So instead of fighting the tools, just find the strengths of them and use them together. And, and like I said in the article, Gozi is your friend. It's your best friend, and uh, the two work very well.